Hello, it's Thursday the 23rd of November 2017. Welcome to the Purple Army Podcast in association with Goldstone Wealth Management. This is episode number 105 and I am Ross McGregor. In this week's show we'll have a look around the league. We'll chat about the comments sent to us by listeners. First off though, we chat about the clan's four point weekend. This week by Jennifer Shaw. How are you, Jennifer? Very well, thanks, Ross. And Stephen McClellan. How are you, Stephen? I'm good, thanks, Ross. We're back for another week and for a change. Well, we've had it once this year already, but we've got a four point weekend. How good was mm-hmm. that? Um, kind of unexpected given like the form, but there were signs, I think, Jennifer, that the, the team were starting to pick up a wee bit over the last few weeks, and albeit two one goal wins, but Wins a win, we'll take the four points, won't we? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't at the game on Saturday night, but I watched the webcast on um, Sunday. Um, I don't think we did anything spectacularly other than defended well. So, considering that's been like a, a huge fall short for us, it was actually quite nice to to see us step up. Um, and obviously, Gary getting his shut shut out very first one with his brother backing him up. So that was that was quite good yeah. to see. I'm sure that would have been a good first journey home for once. We'll start obviously with the Saturday night though, a three-two win against the Stars. I'm sure the Stars uh, scored first. We came back to equalise. Stars scored again. We came back to two-two and eventually got the winning goal. Now it was a tight game. They didn't start particularly well by my memory. Um, Dundee, Dundee, I think, given that the, the results of the last few weeks, Stephen, I thought they were a wee bit disappointing. What did you think, or did you not go to Dundee game? I can't remember. No, I, I was not feeling well. Um, no, like the way Dundee, they beat Belfast, they beat Cardiff, so they would have been full of confidence coming into this one. But at the same time, they're so short in bodies just now that you've got to wonder just how much they they had to give after, I think this was their fourth game, or maybe fifth game in a week and a half, because I remember they had a midweek game against someone the week before. So but I think they've got five players out just now. That's always got to take a toll in any team in terms of keeping the players fit and uh, not tired. So, you know... Maybe the result wasn't expected so much, but Dundee's performance, if they weren't that great, could probably be explained away by that, partially. And obviously we had to turn up, which is a big question sometimes for us, whether we're going to do that or not. So, you know, all in all, good win, um, some good goals and a good way to start the, the weekend. Jennifer, did you were you there? No, you were going out on Saturday night. No, I, I was away at the weekend, so it was just yeah. the the highlights that I had the chance to see. I've got to say, their second goal was absolutely amazing. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a really good one. But our our goals were good as well, and that's the thing. Like with somebody like Fullerton as well, when he's on his game, he's really really good. But when he has a bad night, he's a really really bad night. So I think it's just your your luck, which Fullerton's in goal when you're playing Dundee. So yeah, and it was nice to get. You know, we've been talking about the Brooks Petone Schofield line who have really been doing a lot of the production. Shattuck uh, got his fifth goal of the season against Dundee and Mike Embach got his fifth as well. So it was nice to see a wee bit of a secondary score in there, um, which does give us a wee bit more hope um, for the, the coming games coming up. I mean, that that's us. After, well, after the Dundee game we were on, we'd won, what was a third three out of four? Only game we lost was to Nottingham down there, and we were on a two-game winning streak, which is only the second time this year we've won two games in a row. So, the, I mean, the one I thought might be more tricky, you know, without having seen Dundee, um, the one I thought might have been more tricky was the trip down to Milton Keynes, purely because it is a heck of a long trip. Um, but with uh, Ryan Nye's wife um, very close to giving birth, Gary Russell, as you said, Jennifer got the chance to go in nets. Uh, I watched that game in webcast as well. We came out 1-0 winners, which I'll take any day of the week. 
wasn't the the most entertaining game, but you know, once again, we're doing what we need to do to eke out the wins, even though. And I, I said it. I said it at the start. We we seem to be showing signs of getting better, but at the end of the day, I don't still don't think we're there. Um, but going down to Milton Keynes and taking two points, if we want to be a top five team, is something we really need to be doing, isn't it, Jane? Yeah, no, as, as I said, it wasn't, as you said, it wasn't the most exciting game. Obviously, we went 1-0 uh, up quite early on and we just defended the rest of the game. But um, obviously, that final penalty kill just kind of towards the end, that was, I don't know how you'd be, I was pretty nervous when I was watching it. Um, but just to kind of see see that go well for a change, because so many times it's not gone well for us. So it was not the most entertaining games. But, and it was really early face-off as well, half past five. I'm trying to think what time the team would have had to have left to have, been in Milton Keynes for half past five Being um, on a Sunday. Your coach's, coach's record, and I yeah. mean John Tripp, uh-huh. I mean the bus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think they didn't left at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah. yeah, so I don't imagine there was a lot of sleep pad or it's a big big turnaround for players to kind of get home, get relaxed, and then get back up and out the next day. So it was good, good win. I'll take it. If, if, it, if you'd said at the beginning of the weekend that we were going to walk away with a four point weekend and a bit in your hand off, and we've got it, so we can't really complain at that. Yep, as you said, Jane, the, the big story, I think, in the Milton Keynes victory was the defence and the special teams. We stopped five power plays uh, on the way to that one, Stephen. I mean, that's got to be a good sign, considering the way we, we've been leaking goals over since the start of the season, really. Yeah, um, definitely we've ripped into the defence <laughs> times this season, and rightly so, for some of the, the crap they've served up. But you've got to give them credit. You know, they've... That's five periods and they've went without conceding. So they're they're doing something right just now. And, and Bart has been set up two game-winning goals um, going back to the, the Guildford game and um, Dundee. So, you know, he, he got man of the match on Sunday as well. So he's playing well. And I think the whole team together has played well uh, defensively. And I don't know if it's got anything to do with that uh, Gutwald uh, fellow we got in, but it seems to the defence seems to have shown up ever since he's signed, so good on him. He didn't come in with the biggest reputation, nobody knew much about him, but he seems to be a, a steadying influence on the on the defence anyway. Yeah, you he was one of the things I was I was quite happy you brought that up because he's one of the things I want to talk about. Regardless of what you think his impact on the D, him on his own has I mean he's been quite impressive so far, albeit you know, we've seen him playing sort of bottom end of the table team so far I mean I haven't seen we didn't see, I didn't see how he played in Nottingham but I think he's seen Edinburgh Guildford Dundee and Milton Keynes you know I, I'm, I like the look of the guy but I, I, I'm kind of still reserving judgement till we see him against say that even the likes of Fife um, Coventry we've got coming up not that too distant future Manchester you know, and the bigger teams, you know, the big four. Um, but so far, Jennifer, the, the, you know, it's like Mike Hammond last year, to a lesser extent, given him he's a D-man, but he's come in and he's made a, what seems to be a good impression. Well, at the end of the day, with your D-men, you, you don't want to notice them and you want to, the, the goals to basically stop getting scored. And so far, that's my opinion. I've not really noticed them much, but this, the goals are against us have certainly started to drop. So that can only be a positive thing. Obviously, with Sunday, um, Milton Keynes were without Matt Nickerson because he was banned. So I don't know if maybe that was obviously in a, a, well to an advantage because I think Milton Keynes only had like four or five D men, so they would take advantage of that. Possibly not only scoring one goal, but if it got us a point, then we'll take it. Yep, and Goodwill obviously got his first point for the clan against Dundee with an assist. Um, and you know, there was one thing I meant to talk about last week, which I kind of forgot about. Um, remember, there was a big hoo ha. When Jordan Boesa, in inverted commas, scored his first point for the clan, and it turned out, which we all, everybody was watching it, knew it wasn't actually him. He did actually score his first point against Guildford last week, and nobody seemed to bother their backside. Do you think that's because uh, they made such a mess at the first time? Maybe? No, he's, he's had points before. It was his first goal he was given the other week, was it not? Yeah, it was first goal. Was yeah. Oh, was it? It was yeah. first, first goal, yeah, and I think it was Pavel had like given uh, 12 instead of 22. Yeah, no, I'm going to check that. Because I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty he sure he got a point last season. Uh, did, uh, he definitely got a point last season because that was you're well right, celebrated. Yeah, right. he got one point last season. He must have got an assist last season. See, I forgot all about it. Um, but yeah, oh, so it was a goal. We thought he got it the last time, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, did. They all did. Everyone else knew he was. It wasn't him, but. How was it? How was it on Saturday not having Pavel? 
Just out of interest. No, Toby it was, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Uh, I, I like Toby, but I didn't, again, you know, I'm not as down in Pavel as everybody else seems to be. It's not, um, it's not so much being down in Pavel, it's more the fact that I think he was the ref of every home game the season before Saturday. Yeah, you've seen a lot, an awful lot of them, I agree with that, yeah. Yeah, it's like you need to mix up a bit, you can't have the same ref every time, you know. Though in saying that, I think we had Toby for a long spell the other season, so who knows. Who knows. Um what was the other thing we're going to talk about? Oh, we're going to go on, moving on to our schedule. Um, we only have one game next weekend, um, Saturday at Brayhead Arena against the Edinburgh Capitals. Um, given the strife, Edinburgh lost their top scorer this week. Um, he's away home. Given they're already short-handed, given all the stuff that's going on over there, and given that, you know, I think we've played Edinburgh three times this season and beat them each each time. That's where most of our points have come from. Do you'd like to think, Jennifer, we can continue that run and get what would be our fourth win against Edinburgh and extend our winning run to four games, wouldn't you? Yeah, I hope so. I'm not, unfortunately not able to make the game because I'm stuck in work. So, um, yeah, but I, I kind of always have a soft spot for the Caps and I don't like seeing them doing well. And this season really has been absolutely disastrous, although obviously they did beat Coventry at the weekend. So that was like quite good for them. Um, to actually get some points, but yeah, nobody nobody likes to see a team doing as badly as the Caps have been. But do you know what I mean? They know what they need to do. Start getting players in. But we'll take advantage of that and take the points. I'm not not going to get sentimental over it. So, oh no, if, if it's between us and the Caps, I'd rather we win. Um, and I'm not going to spout anything about the Caps being my second team, but because people seem to take exception to that, I don't really have a second team. Um, Stephen, I take it you'll be going for a two point weekend. Going for a um, full lot, be greedy like Graham when you usually hear. <laughs> we need to. Um, I, I'd be happy if we got out there. If we win on Saturday, that's us went undefeated in the league in November, which is another step forward towards no being pished. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so I'd, be, I'd be happy with that. You know, and well, at the start of the month, if you'd said to me, we'll go unbeaten in the league, even given it was Edinburgh twice, Guildford and Dean Milton Keynes, I would have bitten your hand off really uh, bitten your hand off because I wouldn't honestly have put money on it so yep. yeah you're absolutely right yeah, but it just, I, I thought the, the hardest game of the run I knew Guildford at home would be uh, one of the difficult ones but Milton Keynes is the one where I would have thought away if it's like if we lose that but win our home games you know it's still still a positive but let's not blow it now after after a good month when you finish the job and, and get the two points on Saturday yep and I think I'll be going for the two points as well. But we're coming into a difficult, more difficult period in December. First weekend of December, we've got Coventry, a doubleheader Saturday, Sunday, Coventry and Nottingham Panthers, both in the league. First time we'll have seen Coventry this season. And then the following weekend, we've got a game the Friday and the Saturday. Uh, again, it's at home to the Steelers on the Friday and away to Coventry. So... You know, those four games will really be a gauge, I think, Jennifer, of how far we have come. Um, Nottingham and Sheffield have taken us to task. Both uh, both teams, sorry, on each occasion we've played them this year, we have not been at the races, bar the one game we had in Nottingham, which I just, I, I you know, said it before and I've said it again, you know, it was one of these ones we stole that. We absolutely stole it. Um, but I think it'd be a good gauge, especially with Coventry. Coventry are... Always, for me, a kind of barometer. Uh, I think they're very similar in size, very similar in budget, and it gives us a good chance to gauge ourselves for Coventry every season. So those four games will be crucial as well, won't they? Yeah, I'm actually quite looking forward to it because... You actually make any of them? <laughs> um, I am, actually. I'm just actually just kind of looking at them. Um, there are some that I can make, there are some that I can't. Yeah, long story. <laughs> um, yeah, this new job is lots of fun. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. I, I'm looking forward to actually seeing the other teams as well because I didn't go to either of the Sheffield, Sheffield or the Nottingham one just because you had to, to obviously pay extra for them in both games I was working. So, um, no, it'll be good to see what they've got. Um yeah, but I don't have we gotten any better? I don't know. Yeah, These games are the ones that will tell us. So. We, we had some periods of play in both the Milton Keynes and Dundee games where I think, Stephen, for the first time this year, we've managed to have some sustained... 